Got my pork. Got my pan. Got my chili and my lime. Hey everyone, Tim here. I am taking a deep dive into a recipe that I developed, chili lime pork. I am super in love with this recipe because it uses some great cooking techniques, builds layers of flavor, which I love, and I'm cooking in cast iron, which is just a bunch of fun. So, we'll be searing these pork chops, then we are charring some fresh corn, then we're bringing it all together. We've got some chili and some lime, some queso, cilantro, it's really gonna be good. So let's get started. First things first, I'm going to preheat my cast iron skillet. I am only using like medium heat and it's gonna take like five to six minutes to preheat the pan. While that's preheating, I'm going to season my pork chops. I'm using chili lime rub, which is delicious. It's kind of both bright flavors and kind of the depth from the chilies. And I'm gonna do one tablespoon or whatever else falls onto it while I'm scooping it out. I'm just gonna season that between all four of them. Flip it over, do the other side. Make sure to get a good shot of me washing my hands. So still preheating, my pork is seasoned and I'm just going to keep prepping. So I've got corn here that I'm just going to take off the cob. This part's super easy, super fun. I'm doing it into a bowl because corn has a tendency to go everywhere but where you want it whenever you're cutting it. And whenever you cut it off the cob, you see this kind of like starchy water coming off of the corn. That's gonna have a ton of flavor in it that will end up in the pan. Okay, the pan is preheated. It's pretty good and hot. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of oil to the pan. So, pork goes in. And we're going to sear these for about four minutes. Really, I think that you can kind of sear anything if you've got a good pan, good high heat. That's not to cook the pork, that's just to get a char on the outside of it. Cooking it will take a little bit longer. Um, here's the key. You gotta leave it alone. Whenever you're trying to get a really good sear on a pork chop like this, you just have to leave it be. Uh, so, while that's happening, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep prepping our vegetables. So we're gonna chop up pepper and an onion. Ugh. I know, I wanna mess with it, but you don't. You just leave it there. Un it's, like, it's like when your grandma's watching her stories, she doesn't like to be disturbed. It's like that with pork chops. Okay, so we're going to chop up our pepper. All right, we'll just keep going. We'll it's not fully chopped, but I wanna put an onion in there too and we can get it all together. So let's check on this pork. I think it's been four minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Good, beautiful char, well seasoned, it looks great. So when you're trying to cook the pork, I'm not gonna put this in the oven, so how long I cook it on the second side depends on the thickness of the pork chop. Like, if I'm looking at these, I bet this guy's gonna finish sooner than this guy. He's the thickest one of the bunch. You just kinda have to trust your judgment. If you're worried that you're gonna burn the pork chops on the outside before they're cooked all the way through, you can kinda lower the temp a little bit, and it's fine. But you can also use a thermometer whenever time comes, and so you don't have to trust your judgment. You can trust technology, which is great. Got a fresh zucchini here that's gonna add a little bit of kind of green, bright, summery flavors. And then we've got some tomatoes. We're gonna do half moons from the zucchini, which is pretty easy to do. You've got a full moon and you've got a half moon. That's it, it's really easy. Full moon, half moon, and then we'll slice it. Man. This smells really good. You're gonna wanna make this. All right, how are we doing? So if you think about whenever you're cooking pork or chicken or anything, it takes kind of a long time to get from, 
you know, 30 degrees all the way to 120. It takes like forever. The thing is that last 20 degrees that you're trying to get it to happens fast. So don't think, okay, it took 10 minutes to get to this point. It's gonna take another 10 to get to the end. It's gonna happen really quickly. So this will just be another minute or two. Tuck those in there. Okay, tomatoes in half, easy. Okay, this pork is done, I know. I'll leave this last guy in here, like I said, he's big. It's gonna take a little longer, but that's okay. Pork, I like to cook to, it's technically a medium temperature at like 145, but I like to cook it to 140 degrees then pull it out of the pan and let it come up to temperature after that. Okay, 141, it's pretty good. Set him to the side, those are going to rest and this pan is going to do a lot more work after that. You can see before I add anything else in, there's a lot of like charred bits, there's a little bit of smoke. This is what I'm looking for. So all of that starchy water from the corn is gonna go into the pan it's gonna cook down, and I'm really trying to char this corn. So I'm just gonna spread it out over the pan. Just gonna let it do its thing for a second. You're going to want to be tempted to use frozen corn in this recipe. When you're cooking with frozen corn, there's going to be a lot of moisture in the corn that you have to cook all of that out first before you can get any good like searing on and good char, good caramelization. So it just, it takes longer. It's never gonna be quite as good as using corn that you cut off the cob. Now you can kind of see it. Good charred corn. So it chars really beautifully whenever you leave it in a pan for a minute. Okay, in goes more veg. My peppers and onions. And at this point, this is really when I wanna start stirring things around. I know it's been a lot of put it in the pan, leave it alone. Here's when you can start stirring and zhuzhing and feel like you're cooking, which is great. What's happening right now is that all of the water from the onions and the peppers are being cooked out and they are essentially like cleaning my pan for me right now, which is great because I don't like doing dishes. But all of the charred chili lime rub, all of the fond that's left in the bottom of the pan after I'm cooking that pork is now coming up and seasoning the vegetables, seasoning the onions and the peppers. Let's see, I've got my zucchini here. This doesn't take long. I'm gonna cook this for two minutes tops. I don't want it to be soft. Still want it to have a little bite to it. Still want it to retain its kind of freshness. And I'm gonna add some garlic. Once it starts softening just a little bit, there's so much heat still in this pan that I can cut off the heat and it's still gonna keep cooking down for a little bit, which is when I add the tomatoes. Like I said, I've already turned off the heat because I really don't wanna cook the tomatoes. I'm not making like a tomato sauce. I just want them kind of warmed through a little bit. So here's what I've got. some. Fresh cilantro, like I said, kind of a fair amount of cilantro. I'm gonna save a little bit. Queso fresco, you know, this dish doesn't have a ton of fat to it, right? It's just fresh corn, it's tomatoes, it's zucchini, the pork is a loin, so it's really lean. So a little bit of some like richness to it, kind of rounds everything out. I'm adding two more teaspoons of the chili lime rub to this after it's cooked because the lime, when you cook it, kind of gets dulled a little bit. So adding a little bit more at the end after everything is done cooking makes everything kind of bright and fresh. I'm gonna put the pork back in. Let's bring this whole thing right to the table. That's good stuff right there. I wanna throw that down the drain. And yeah, you know what? Just put like a little bit more on the top because it's beautiful, right? We're garnishing now. Okay. 
There it is. <sighs> Chili lime pork. It's got the lime, it's got the queso fresco, the tomatoes. It's got that depth though from searing the pork and charring that corn. And you know what, we used our time well, right? We did some cooking and we did some prepping all at once so we can get dinner done fast. So now all that's left to do is let's dig in and eat.